Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage. And this is my $1,000 Harbor Freight Toolbox. It is full of tools that I went out and purchased about a year ago to uh, just build a good beginner's guide to uh, what you need to build cars. And for the most part, everything that I have built in this workshop for the past year has been out of this toolbox. It has performed incredibly well. I have uh, knocked this thing over twice. I have tried to abuse this thing, destroy this box, and well, it's held up. But if we're being perfectly honest, over the past year, there have been times that I have gone over to my Matco toolboxes and, uh, well, grabbed the very expensive tools. So, today's going to be a little bit special. After a year, it's time to grow up. It's time to uh, move up and out of our awesome starter box. This thing's been amazing and go into something a little bit bigger. Just like you guys, if you're graduating your trade school, if you're wanting to upgrade your home garage, or you were you know, already in a workshop ready to move into something a little bit bigger and better than the Yukon and Quinset. Now, we're not gonna throw everything away because, well, it's proven itself. These things have done absolutely amazing, and we're gonna move almost all of this over into the new box along with uh, adding in some other tools that we picked up at Harbor Freight that uh, I wish I knew why so many flies came in here. There's no food, there's nothing. They just get inside and irritate the heck out of me. So along with moving most everything out of this toolbox into the grown-up toolbox, we're also going to uh, get the Harbor Freight equivalents of the tools I consistently grabbed out of the main toolboxes, which means the quarter million dollars of uh, Matco, Snap-on, and Fornwell tools are going to be pretty close to retired, which, you know, I've spent that money, but the value of these videos for you is you don't have to spend the money because, honestly, you don't have to anymore. The, the tool trucks are kind of, uh, they're expensive when you don't need to be expensive. Now, you hear me referencing the new box. That's because we have a new box here, and uh, it's kind of special. Now, for those of you watching this box down the line, this isn't quite as exciting as it is right now, because I have... Well, here, let, let me roll this one out, and uh, let me pull in the new toolbox and uh, show it to you, because it's the first one in a workshop. It's the first one that's not at a trade show. And what's crazy to think is this entire relationship and the fact that I get to have the very first one, period, is all because I threw a pair of flyers at a wall and said, don't buy this, they're junk. And you know, I kind of stand by that. Uh, I would not buy another set of those fit for flyers, but uh, look at this beauty. Here, let me, let me turn it a little bit. My viewfinder's small on the camera. So, all right, I'll, I'll look over the top of the box, see how it does on focusing. What you are looking at is the very first Series 3 U.S. General Toolbox and Hutch. They've never had a Hutch before. I've got a Hutch in slate gray out in the wild. They've shown these a little bit at CMET and some trade shows, but nobody outside of Harbor Freight has gotten one. So we get to tell you what I think about it before we put our tools in it. So, as you can tell, this is no longer just a small roll-around tool chest. That's what we've had that Yukon. I used a lot like a service cart or a roll cart. It was easy to roll, get up to your car, and uh, it had a work surface that you can kind of abuse. Now, this is a proper toolbox. It's meant to kind of be more stationary, not roll around as much, and house all of your tools. And I'm really excited to have it. One, not just because it's the first one and I get to give you a... Uh, real honest opinion of what I think of it, including some things I found wrong, but I can speak pretty strongly about what this box is meant to go against. It is the Snap-on K-Series line. It's their entry level, you know, just kind of entry plus. It's not their cheapest of the cheap. It's not their best of their best. And the U.S. General line comes out swinging. Now, if you were to option out exactly what you see here, a 72-inch bottom with work hutch, from Snap-on, as of today, you're gonna spend about $12,500. And it's empty. 
I haven't been told I can reveal pricing, but I'm going to reveal pricing. The bottom, $17.99. The top, $6.99. So just about $2,500. You're saving $10,000. That's a, a car or a, some of the cars we buy that's like four cars, or you're going to completely fill this thing out. So we're going to go into the ins and outs of the new Series 3, what they've improved that I'm aware of, and then we're going to go over what we're going to fill in it um, with our $10,000 in savings. About this box. So again, it is in a slate gray. I like the black finish with the slate gray. If you've ever seen my Matco box in the background, it's a black cabinet with uh, kind of a slate gray face and drawer set. One thing you will notice in person, it's incredibly hard on uh, camera, is anytime you have these large flat surfaces, you're going to have a little bit of a dimple where you have the spot wells. You're going to have it on a $700 cabinet. You're going to have it on the uh, Snap-on $4,200 cabinet and on my $25,000 Mac 6 series. You have it. It's flat sheet metal. It's going to happen. That's not a $700 versus expensive thing. Deal with it. One thing I really do like is how this hutch opens. It's gas shock, tilts right up. One thing you do have happen because of that, you lose a little bit of the square storage. You know, like it's not all of this room for storage if you're throwing a bunch of junk in here because the door swings into it. But in comparison, on my really expensive Mac 06 series, you lift the door up and you slide it in. So you have all of this space, but you're lifting a relatively heavy door, whereas this is a nice effortless movement. Now, at this time, as far as I'm aware, they do not have an integrated light solution. But that is something you can rectify fairly easily by just getting a bulb set that will sit here or a magnet one that you can fit in the back. There's about four inches. One thing that I do call a plus on this is you've got four built-in pass-throughs for your power supply. So you're going to have your scan tool or your laptop sitting in here, easy to get power out wherever it's convenient. Whereas on a lot of the other boxes, you get one spot. That's where they send the power. That's where you got to accept and live with the power coming through. It comes with a nice rubberized bottom that, you know, it smells kind of like the rubber you get on the cheaper stuff, but it's going to be a nice non-flip surface. You get a screwdriver set and just a general bucket for your slot storage, but I'm sure there's more options available. The drawer guards, the slides everywhere. These are really nice. It is a big improvement over what they used to have. Of course, our cheap Yukon, I've knocked them off a couple of times. These are integrated a lot better. I do know the biggest complaint on this series two, the last version of this is your drawer locks were all on one side only. Big, huge improvement. Drawer locks are now across the entire view of toolbox. Now, another really big improvement in my opinion, and it's something I look for in my toolboxes is the wrench drawer and the socket drawers being deep enough. One of my biggest complaints on my little U-Cub is you couldn't stand all your sockets upright. You've got a nice, what would it be? I think 51 inch wide. I don't know inches. It's it's a wide drawer that traditionally you're going to throw all your sockets in the top drawer. There's lots of storage for it, but right below it, you get the deeper drawer set for your wrenches, which is a big perk. I really appreciate that. Another thing, just to get the big deep drawers that are very traditional, on the top tier toolboxes where you're able to throw bigger stuff. You got a welding mask for your own grinding mask, big tools. It could drop it here. And then right here, we got ourselves a power bank. I'll be honest, it's possible most toolboxes come with it this way now, but on my Matco box, the cords are kind of a permanent fixture. Whereas on the Series 3, you're able to plug and unplug them, which is nice for moving because you can easily damage it. So you're set up with six plugs and a power strip in here for whatever you want to charge. Like like your batteries, that, that's probably what you're going to charge. Now, this is something I would need to find more information about. Uh, they did not come keyed the same. So you have the key for the bottom, the key for the hutch. I'm fairly certain you could probably get matching cylinders and I would change the one in your hutch because that's a lot easier than changing the lower box. 
When this arrived, it came in a big freight container. One thing I really appreciated is they give very clear instructions how to get it out of there, and they include a little wooden bridge for you to be able to safely roll this down. I was able to, on my own, get this thing safely down and off of its pallet without too much fuss. Now, it did take uh, grabbing a neighbor to help lift and set the upper hutch on, but it is just a simple process of two people grabbing it and setting it on there. Now, my two biggest immediate complaints on the box as it came off. The casters don't roll the best. They just take some effort. Now, granted, this is a box that's generally meant to set it and forget it. You put it up against the wall, but the $400 box rolls a whole lot nicer initially on my opinion. Um, it does not turn the best, and that's something where I do know it's being addressed and already being kind of looked into. There was no grease at all on the swivel casters when I got my box. Once it was greased, it does start to roll a lot better. It doesn't handle, the, my floors in here are pretty good, but I do get a little bit of teeter um, from the casters. So out the gate, casters could be a smidge better, but realistically, you're gonna slide it into position and it's gonna stay there. And they're gonna do very well for that. Locks work very good. And one of, my other complaints is in the finish. Now, it looks a study from the front. I love the color. Reminds me a little bit of Nardo Gray, which, you know, everyone has put on a car ever since Audi has done it. But on the backside, I can see kind of a spot where it looks like they had to touch up. I tried really, really hard to get it on camera. It does not really show no matter what I do with the light or any trickery of focus. Doesn't mean it's bad at all. And to be 100% perfectly honest, the $25,000 Mac 06 series I own has really bad powder coat in some spots and minor rust coming through. And the opinion I was given while trying to get it addressed was, that's how it is. I spent $25,000 and bad powder coat and rust is just how it is. Good job, Mako. I'm going to go ahead and go with my US General. Where it's fully covered, it's just a little bit imperfect. All right. So I've talked about, and I've shown you some really pretty things about the new Series 3, and I'm really excited to have it. I am a huge toolbox connoisseur. I've spent a lot of money on toolboxes. I have the pink ones because it's my last name. I bought the big black and gray one for no reason other than I wanted a new toolbox. Uh, I buy them, I guess, like shoes. If you put my Mac 06 Series next to this one and said, hey, you can have this for 10% of the other one, I'd buy 10 of these. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of the episode. Not just the eye candy of the brand new, really, really cool Series 3 toolbox. You're upgrading. I'm wanting to give you some good advice. I've spent more than a quarter million in a dollar. It's a hard number to say. $250,000 since uh, a 16 on tool trucks. And they get you in with their little, uh, oh, it's, it's $10 a week, $30 a week, $50 a week. And then you start getting the tool company financing where they charge exorbitant interest rates. So your $4,000 toolbox with nothing in it is now an $8,000 toolbox because a lot of mechanics don't have the best of credit. And one of the biggest things that was fighting against Harbor Freight was the financing, the convenience of the tool trucks. This is something I just want to mention that they now offer financing through Harbor Freight, through an independent company. If you go in store, you come up with an idea of how much you want to purchase, they can reach out. And depending on the amount that you're financing, you have, I think, 18 months, 24 months, or three years at a 0% financing, meaning if you have decent credit and a job, you can go in and get everything and pay 0% interest, which makes it an incredibly affordable, good thing to do. My only word of caution, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial planner or any of those other legal things. Just my experience with those 0% interest companies, if you do not pay it off in the promotional term, you get charged interest on the entire amount from day one. So if you enter into a 0% financing contract, paid off before you're due. Otherwise, you'll have a sudden big bill at the end. 
but you'll probably still pay less than you would on uh, some of those company credit lines. But tools, I get to show you some really fun tools and talk about what I've been using out of the main toolbox and how much money you can save uh, by buying Icon or Quinn. Full disclosure and honesty, Harbor Freight sent me this toolbox and they sent me the tools I get to show you here in a second. Everything in here I bought, but my new Icon and Quinn stuff they sent me. Really the biggest reason is my, they, they asked, hey, what are you using most out of your main toolboxes? And um, they didn't want me putting Maco and Snap on in their US General. They uh, went ahead, just made sure I had the icon to fill it with. So yes, they sent me these tools, but my favorite part about working with Harbor Freight, the only thing they ask is that I'm honest. Remember, we started this whole relationship with me throwing pliers at a wall, them breaking, and me telling you not to buy them. They say be fair. Again, like what I'm telling you about their brand new signature toolbox, it has some flaws. I would still buy it knowing those flaws because you don't need to spend $8,500 on a toolbox. You don't. I've done it a lot, multiple times, many times, way too many times. You don't have to spend that money because you don't make money with the big fancy toolbox, you make money with what's in it. So, let me start carrying some of these uh, things over and then we'll bring you in and start talking about it. I have two sets of these, which means I can try to break these. Snap-on is really proud of their new fancy pliers that can pick up dimes. And uh, Icon has pretty much a competing set. So, uh, I have two. So maybe we could try some dimes or uh, just trying to break this because uh, I have two sets. A little bit of perspective. This box, not completely full, has a lot of tools in it. And the box. All of these tools here, tools here, this cabinet, is less than just the snap-on cabinet. Just the cabinet, no tools. There's some good value here. Well, all right, so yeah, you see all of the boxes. What I'm going to do is we're just gonna set up the camera. I'm gonna get everything into our new toolbox and we'll talk about what made the cut from our initial purchase, what didn't, and why we went with some of these specialty wrenches. So, Cue fun music while I move a bunch of stuff around. We are moved into our new Series 3 toolbox, and I'm going to go over and uh, kind of let you know how many tools were a good buy from when we've set up our first $1,000 toolbox. When you first were getting started, how many tools are going to keep using? Now, one thing I do kind of want to just cover, because we're uh, talking about everything honestly. One of my biggest complaints really with the Quinn toolkit was kind of how much wasteful packaging there was. There was a lot of plastic, and once you were done unboxing everything, they're just there's a little too much waste left behind and you know 
they're dealing with retail packaging. It has to be nice on a shelf versus a tool truck. That's just a lot of extra. Most of it is able to be recycled, so we're good to go there. But hey, I get to be honest about everything. So let's go through our Quinn toolbox and see what didn't make the cut. And then we're gonna talk about the tools that we added to our toolkit and why you would wanna do that. So here is our trusty little Yukon. Pretty much just bolts and things that had fallen in. All of our sockets got graduated. Everything has made the cut when it comes to our sockets, our wrench drawers. The storage didn't quite work out with the number of new wrenches, but they all made it over. This was our screwdriver drawer. I left behind, I've never once used these other than like opening stuck silicone. So they didn't make the cut. It just is not something I practically use. That, that slide's a little broken from getting knocked over. This had some impact sockets and those of course made it. That's just some gasket paper. That will probably get moved over. Our metric wrenches. Oh. Look at all of those pliers. Totally honest with you guys, did not love the Pittsburgh pliers. We didn't love them when they were brand new and I threw them against the wall and they broke. Buy the Quinn, buy the Doyle, buy the Icon. That's my opinion. If you're in a workshop using them a lot, the Pittsburghs just don't quite cut it. Uh, and then from there, more impact sockets and that was just a catch-all of miscellaneous tools from road trips. I didn't move them over because a lot of them are duplicates and they're just gonna kind of continue being in a box. So let's go over all of our tools that we have added to our kit and why. Top drawer here is our socket drawer. Now again, we talked about, we added some swivel impact sockets because uh, you really don't wanna be impacting on universals, especially Chrome Universal. Our Quinn sockets, I have been very pleased with them. I have not had any issues with them slipping due to, you know, a size problem. They have worked amazing. So they've all graduated. I saw no need to replace them. We did add some ratchets. So here is the included Quinn quarter inch ratchet. It did all right, but it just, it left a little to be desired. I'm a big fan of good hand feel and we just didn't quite have it all here. So I got two different quarter inch styles. This is what I most frequently was grabbing out of the big box. And this I really like because you can turn it straight, kind of use it as a ratchet driver. You're able to just get in a really good, convenient position with it. And then just another nice, there we go. Learning the new camera guys, we'll get it all right. Another nice sealed style ratchet, both fine teeth. And we did the same thing, except three eighths. It's done well. It should have broken many times and it hasn't. Um, so we're keeping that as our primary short one. And we added a long handle flex head three eighths. This is a tool I very frequently was grabbing a uh, name brand equivalent out of the big box. Moving up into our half inch again, the Quinn. And then I added a slightly larger uh, comfort grip Pittsburgh. They've done well, haven't had problems with them, but there are times you need a little bit more. So I got a longer flex head again, icon ratchet. And then uh, don't use your ratchets to break things loose, get a breaker bar. So we added a breaker bar. That was one of the other things I consistently got out of the main toolboxes. And then of course we have got a really nice icon half inch torque wrench. And then I got a Quinn just standard clicker style 3H torque wrench for the smaller bolts. These work very well. They have tight tolerances. So those were things I was grabbing out of the main box. So the best thing I can recommend simply when it comes to ratchets is think about the type of work you're going to be doing and what's going to be the most important thing for you. Flexible heads, a comfort grip. It's one of those things that there are subjective things that make a ratchet better, but you're the one using it in your hand. You want it to be something you like. So just because someone tells you something's better, try it out, feel it. This is the style of ratchets I consistently found to be very good and grabbed almost all of the time. I could go to the wrenches next, but let's look at our new plier drawer because you'll notice one thing. If I'm, I said none of the Pittsburghs made it. 
I lied. One of the guys did make it over. This little chunky boy worked out really well. It's a non-bolted style, and I've been very pleased with it. These are the main style of pliers I consistently were grabbing. Small needle nose, channel locks. I love these. These are kind of like a quick crescent wrench almost, where you can push and adjust, and they're flat jaws designed to just quickly turn fasteners. Really good for doing alignments. And just, again, for quick, easy things, love that style. I always extended straight and slightly angled needle nose. And then, if you're gonna do wiring, or anything with zip ties, please, please buy one of these. These are flush cuts. When you pull a zip tie and you use normal diagonal cutters, you leave a sharp little edge that slices fingers open. It's actually, you know. So these get really tight. I'm a, oh, it does focus that close. They get really tight and will give a nice clean edge. So if you're using zip ties, please get them. And then this is that special needle nose plier I was talking about. I've got two of them. Before we're done, I'm going to abuse these and see what happens. They show you picking up coins and things. If you're not picking up a dime. Like, there's no point in it. Just off camera for fun, I picked up a razor blade. But let's just see what we can grab and potentially lift with these magical pliers. We'll do hammer, dead blow, and a dead blow. Ball peen, I really like. This is an impact driver. This is for like the Honda screwdrivers and hub screws and things like that. Anyone who's used one of these has probably gotten their hand at least once. Whereas this has got a nice little flange to uh, help you if your aim's not totally true. All right, wrenches. So they send those cases and I just couldn't fit because uh, we upgraded our wrench collection substantially and i have found in all of my years wrenches really have been the thing i use the most of and you need the biggest selection to do what you need to when you're working on different cars now if you notice our quinn made it over they have done very well sometimes i ran into issues where they weren't like absolutely perfect fits or there's just enough tolerance that on a rusty fastener it couldn't quite get it. Now, one thing to note about the Quins is if we look there, these are smooth jaw, smooth jaw, smooth mouth. They're just good, basic wrenches. These are what you're going to want to use if you have a decorative fa fastener, something that you can't risk putting a mark on because, well, they're smooth. But in the real world, when we're working on some old stuff, you are going to have fasteners that want to slip and round so that's where i got a set of these these are the non-slip these are designed to bite into the sides and they cam in just a little bit and do a really good job so i got these because very consistently i was grabbing my flank drive wrenches anytime i had to use an open end just for that reason right there the other thing i got a whole lot were my stubby flex head ratcheting wrenches because there's times that once you've gotten your fastener loose, you just have to ratchet it out and you're in there and it's 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 not fun. But you can hear too. Let's see. Focus is going crazy, but it's got a nice fine. Come on, there we go. Nice fine head to it. I was very pleased with the quality of these, so I got a set of them. Another incredibly important wrench that I grabbed a whole lot were these offset wrenches. They just have a nice little step to them. And there's times that they're the perfect thing to get just around a distributor, something like that. Basic set of ratcheting wrenches. It would seem odd. You got your stubbies. I use these quite a bit, so these fit very, very well. What's nice too is sometimes you just need to ratchet a little bit, but not take it completely off or you're working on a stud. So the reversible ratchet wrenches, really good. And these are also non-slip. Enough for really important little guy just normal stubby wrenches these things work amazing in certain situations and then this is the row of just kind of my heroes these are nice and long you have good leverage because of that length something to remember the measurement of torque we most commonly use in the u.s is foot pounds so if you can make it two feet 
you have to exert half the pressure to uh, apply that torque. So having the right length is very important. And then these are another really good thing. Reversible, offset, swivel head, ratcheting wrenches. Now these come in super, super handy if you're doing a lot of oil changes. They're paired in combo sizes. I know that that's where they've been used a ton when I was in the dealer. I just like them. That's just the metric drawer. So we got pretty much the exact same complement of our SAE wrenches. Same exact reasons. I just did not quite get all of the wrenches in SAE because I do not use it as frequently. Buy the sizes you need. Here is overflow wrenches, curl feet. You don't use them a ton, but when you use them, it is literally the most valuable tool in your toolbox. I got a set of the Quinn flares. Everyone needs a crescent wrench that big. And then I have never in my life liked any level of screwdriver organization. So it bugs me, but that's how I keep them. And then I'd move to my common ones right there. Then my last one, that's a real nice set of snap ring pliers. You need snap rings working on transmissions, axles. It's, they're just, they're everywhere. And a good set is absolutely crucial. Let's go ahead and set up. I'm gonna kind of give you my uh, final thoughts and we're gonna break down costs. Well, all right, I said in that last clip, we're gonna go straight to my thoughts and kind of costs, but then I forgot. We're gonna try to break these pliers. So here's a scrap pile. This is an old Forerunner tank. See where I'm pinching down? One hand. Okay. Also, this has got a lot of water in it since it started raining. Here, like, it's off the ground. Just That's impressive. Crankshaft by the reluctor wheel. Can't grab it there. Okay, here we go. This is hardened. Okay. Holy cow. I mean, that's impressive. I, I don't care that you're picking up a dime. I just picked up a crankshaft. Okay, price point. If you were to match everything in this toolbox using the Silver Eagle line and the Matco line off the Matco tool trucks, the Blue Point and the Snap-on names, and in some cases you have to go to like the gear wrench. But basically, what are all considered name brand tool truck, you know, tools and a toolbox that's going to match the same amount of storage from snap on bottom case and the hutch 72 inches. You're going to spend $25,000. So how much for our brand new US General Series 3 with hutch, all of those icon wrenches, a lot of icon wrenches. Hammers, sockets, new new ratchets, a lot of stuff. We went over it all already, including the tools that we brought from our Yukon box, our old faithful here, things that grew up. You're going to spend $5,850, including a toolbox. You're going to save $20,000. Just an initial purchase prices. That's not including whatever you're going to pay a revolving account interest. Please understand that I'm I'm really not old. I'm turning 40 this year. Makes me feel kind of old. I was 18 years old in a mechanic shop and I loved the tool truck day. And I bought a lot of tools. Going all the way back then, Harbor Freight did not have the quality that it really does today. You couldn't reliably go and pick up a less expensive option. If you wanted good quality tools, you got them on a tool truck. Things have changed a lot. You still can get crappy tools from Harbor Freight. Sorry, pliers. You're just never going to win me over. Just really be smart with your money. I've, when I say a quarter million dollars in tool truck purchases, that might be low. I've, I've spent a lot of money in my life and I want to be able to use my platform to help educate you because your cars need it. You need to buy the parts for your questionable builds. You want to be driving our cars, not just looking at a pretty toolbox because that $25,000 on your tool truck, on the, the, the company's credit accounts, 
even in the most simplest of terms, is going to very quickly be 34,000, 36,000. And it's hard to justify that when you're able to walk into a brick and mortar store and instantly save 20 grand. So less than the interest that you're going to spend on the tool truck purchase. Well, I get it. It doesn't say SAP on. Skippers don't care anymore. That used to be a thing. Customers used to know tool brands. That's that's gone the way of the dodo. They want you to work on their car quickly, correctly, cheaply. That's what a customer wants. They don't care that you have $12,000 in just a toolbox. I'm here to just try to help open your eyes and keep you from overspending. Because realistically, working blind, when I was at a friend's workshop, just helping with projects, grabbing tools out of a toolbox, I could not tell you the difference between the Snap-on and the Icon Ratchet. Just grabbing it and using it, they felt identical. They were side by side. Warranty, you have the same warranty. Yes, you have to drive to a Harbor Freight. If there's not a Harbor Freight really close to you, that could be a little inconvenient. And you don't even have to buy Harbor Freight. If you want to, go to Home Depot, uh, buy, buy whatever store is close and not $25,000. My final opinion of this new box, this big, here, uh, I already was out of the way. I just stood in front of it. My opinion of US General Series 3. In the toolbox lineup at Harbor Freight, this is the middle tier box. You have the Yukon below it and you have the Icon Series above it. What do I think of it? I think it's phenomenal for its price point. For what you pay for this toolbox, it is punching so far above its weight class, its price point. It offers a ton. Yes, it has some shortcomings, but none of them are deal breakers. There is, you've got to look at cost value. The sliders are great. The locks are great. The hinge quality of the hutch is great. If you're planning to roll it around a ton, you shouldn't buy a 72 inch box. That's that's not what these are meant for. That's where like our little Yukon is really good at that. It's meant to roll around and kind of get abused. These are more stationary. You roll them just when you need to move bays or to your new job. Is it perfect? No, but just perspective. Where I'm at with this box, I'm uh, gonna be cleaning up and selling my Matco 6 series. The box I bought for 25 grand and it's probably worth like eight on the, on the used market. Good value, good value there. But it's a phenomenal box. I'm really impressed with it. All of the really big complaints that they had in the past, they've improved. They listen, they make everything better. So, looks amazing, works incredibly well. I really like how smooth this hutch is. I'm a fan. So I really hope you guys appreciated hanging out for a tool video. I've got more tools to keep using, abusing, and giving you my honest opinion as we go along. That's it. I'm Jared, reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, except for when it comes to your money, especially your tool budget. Buy the better, cheaper tools, and buy the car parts you need to finish your project. We'll see you.